complete a full two mean hypothesis test with population standard deviation unknown. P-value approach. When you stop and you look and you have this really long problem, before you stress, get yourself a piece of paper so that you can write down the important information as you go. It will help you keep things organized and lower your stress level as you work through the problem. Okay, let's go ahead and start. A cardiologist, concerned about the heart rate of a patient, asked the patient to undertake a new cardiovascular exercise program. The cardiologist measured the patient's heart rate during 15 random workouts completed by the patient during the new exercise program. The mean heart rate for these workouts was 177 beats per minute with a standard deviation of 2.4. The cardiologist compared this with a sample of 15 random workouts completed by the patient during the patient's previous exercise routine, which had a mean heart rate of 180 beats per minute with a standard deviation of 2.5. Assume that the heart rates for both types of exercise routines are normally distributed. Let the patient's previous exercise routine be the first sample and the patient's new cardiovascular exercise program be the second sample. At the 0 0.10 level of significance, is there sufficient evidence that the patient now has a different average heart rate during the new exercise program? Work through the test procedure and interpret the results of the hypothesis test. Let's go ahead and review those steps. First, we're gonna identify the null and alternative hypothesis. Then we'll decide on the significance level. We'll compute the test statistic, and we'll use that to find the p-value. Next and last, we'll interpret the results of the hypothesis test. Let's get going. Identify the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Well, first, let's recall that the null hypothesis always shows equality, while the alternative hypothesis shows the inequality expressed in the initial question. Because we want just to see if there is a difference in heart rate, we will use the not equal to symbol in the alternative hypothesis. So our null hypothesis will be mu sub one equals mu sub two, and the alternative hypothesis will be mu sub one is not equal to mu sub two. Remembering that the, uh, the first sample is the old exercise program, whereas the new sample is the cardiovascular exercise program. So it's given that the level of significance is 0.10, therefore alpha is 0.10. And then we need to compute this test statistic. Because the standard deviation, the population standard deviation is unknown, we're going to use the t distribution, so the t test statistic. It's always good to know what formula you're using before you just start throwing in numbers. We also want to identify the given values and uh, label them appropriately. So we know the old exercise program had the average heart rate of 180. So that would be the X bar sub one. So anything with the sub one is the first set of data. That's the old exercise program. And the new cardiovascular program has the sub two. You'll notice that both sample sizes are 15. So N sub one equals N sub two equals 15. Once you have identified your formula, you've identified your given values, you substitute those values in. Please make sure when you're using a calculator um, to use parentheses, make sure you're following the order of operations so that you don't end up with a number that doesn't make sense. Here, we find out our test statistic is 3.35. Now I can use that test statistic to find the p-value. So using the table to find the p-value. First, we need to identify the degree of freedom to find the p-value. The estimate of the standard deviation is non-pooled because the standard deviations are unequal. Since the estimate of the standard deviation is non-pooled, the conservative approach to calculate the degrees of freedom is to use the smaller of n sub one minus one and n sub two minus one. Now, that's just the um, sample size minus one for both of the, of the items, but we know our sample size is the same, right? Both n sub one and n sub two are both 15. So when you subtract one, we get the degree of freedom to be 14. So using the T distribution table, we go down to the degree of freedom label, um, line of 14. And then we're using our test statistic of 3.35. So 3.35 is all the way to the right right? It's off the table. It falls to the right of the rightmost number of 2.977. Therefore, 
You'll notice the p-values continue to get smaller as you move to the right in the table. And because we are to the right of the rightmost value, our p-value is going to be less than 0 0.01 because we are the area in two tails, right? The area in one tail would be 0 0.005, but there are two tails and therefore the p-value is less than 0 0.01 for this two-tailed test. Now, when we are interpreting the results, we're going to compare the p-value to that of alpha. Now, the level of significance, or alpha, is 0.10 for this two-tailed test, and we know that our p-value is less than 0.01. So very easy to see that the p-value is less than the level of significance, and therefore we will reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, the interpretation, at the 10% significance level, the data provide strong evidence to show the patient has a different average heart rate during the new cardiovascular exercise routine compared to their previous exercise routine.